Hey everybody, how we doing today? Windy, windy, windy week here in the Florida Keys, but that's a good thing because I was able to spend some quality time at home getting some projects done, including this thing. Bam! My ultimate offshore rig. So I uh, did a bunch of changes, got all the stuff checked off that I needed to do. So let me give you a quick walkthrough, front to back. Well, one of the things I changed out those big bulky handles that uh, they had on prior, just went to my standard PVC with some heavy cordage there. Um, in the front hatch, I've got, ooh, I forgot about that. Picked up a new pump since I'm gonna have two kayaks. Kinda wanna have everything separate there, so I got a new pump. Red, it matches, because that's always important. Uh, I'm going to a um, well system for my um, transducer. So that's mounted in there. So uh, the way it works with a well system is you basically just add a little bit of water to it. And then that fills up the gap between the transducer and the hole. And then that way you have a continual uh, sensor going through it there. So just kind of before I go on a trip, so I could just basically do that. And that'll stay there for weeks because it doesn't really evaporate. Um, I have my battery box here. So I'll be uh, having the battery there. I'll probably move it to my center uh, console area like my other one because I also use this as a dry box when I don't have my battery in there. So that's up front here. Um, part of that was mounting a way for my wires to go through. So I had this block out panel for the sail portion. Um, just put on a cap and then just has the holes run my wires through there. Uh, this is the uh, rig I came up for my uh, fish finder setup there. Uh, it's basically got a Pat R um, mount, uh, Scotty mount there, has one of these heavy duty arms. Uh, it's got the little pivot there, put a ball mount or using my existing ball mount that I had uh, with that and then my fish finder with a quick release uh, mount on there. So that way it kind of stays up out of the water and but yet I moved it in closer so I could uh, hit the buttons when I need to. Uh, I really don't use the fish finder very much even on the way out and on the way back. So basically this will just pop up, spin out and then I throw it in the front hole and then it keeps it dry and out of the way. Um, then just install it when I'm looking for reef spots or the wreck or trolling or whatnot there. Um, this was important because then I could use my uh, pedals without it getting in the way there. And I could just basically rotate this anywhere I want it to, straight up, whatever. Uh, what else we got up here? Um, these are the two Scotty rocket mounts that I added. Uh, basically the same setup as my other one. I actually did get to use the actual Scotty backers in there. So that's 100% in there solid. So super happy about that. Uh, I got a new uh, plug, Hobie plug. So I'm not using the, uh, the fins there. This goes in it and it just makes it like a standard paddle kayak. Uh, aqua uh, clear on the bottom there. Uh, put the two mesh rubber hookless uh, nets in there. Um, that was a big thing on this one. I took out the uh, fish finder mount. This section there used to be mounted here, but that means I kind of lost this uh, storage area there, but I wanted it back on this one. So I've got that there. Uh, anything else up front here? Uh, the seat, I went ahead and uh, mounted the main seat using the uh, Hobie screw in uh, ties there so that keeps it uh, solid in there. I had a problem with it when I would scoot up it would slide up with me and then it was just a hassle so I got that one mounted. I had my the, the original seat that came with this kayak which had a broken end to it but I'm still using that it gives it a little bit of extra comfort in the bottom there but still stays low and then just extra support there and then uh, I've got this to keep my butt out of the water. Uh, it was just a rectangular exercise step type of spongy material the closed cell foam and just trimmed it to fit in there so that keeps me out of the water on that part but if it gets really rough out when I want to get down so in case I don't roll over I could just throw that out of the way and then I'm on the total bottom there for extra stability um, added my little balls back to the lever to make it a little easier to turn balls on either side there for the quick releases um that's pretty much all the up front stuff the mounts uh, i've got the front mount. well this is actually 
as you can see a rear mount that's the item number there from Hobie uh, but I use two rears a rear in the back and then a rear in the front because the front ones come with the welded um, section here for the uh, mast and uh, the sail and mast so I don't need that on this one so saved half the price by just using two rears they're the same exact uh, dimension so no problems there um, the uh, mount rigged up pretty much the same design as my other original one I uh, just lad left the extra length on this side for the uh, second outboard there um, I went stainless on all the bolts the wash fender washers um, only thing is I didn't swap these out to uh, stainless because they have different dimension ones in the stainless and I didn't want to deal with uh, redrilling holes and all that stuff so this rusts out but it takes a year or two for that to happen and then in order to get these out I cut them anyways so they're quick and easy and cheap uh, the stainless steel uh, uh, bracket here the tie down uh, my other one I have to the top bolt uh, but since these came uh, the original ones I bought were 8 inches and I had to extend them fully out in order to fit the top bolt. Uh, these new manufacturer is 7 and 3 quarters so I wouldn't be able to get to the top so I just used the bottom rung there and then stainless steel uh, ties to hold that in there and otherwise that's the same thing. I've got the, uh, the push plates cut down over here to prevent this from getting marred up and that's all set there. on the back you can kind of see their new rig there actually took some time and painted this one so it looks nice uh and you can see those mounts there the pat r mounts on the bottom it just basically clamps to the uh the back cross member which allows you to adapt a scotty mount and then a scotty orlock in there with a stud going through this board into the the scotty orlock and then that's how it mounts there um and then i've got my pvc doubled up through this whole lower midsection is all double PVC tubing um, and then you can kind of see how it's held in so it's been triangulated very well so the board itself is mounted using the stud through the Scotty mounts then I've got it to the back with the PVC mount and then I've got it all tied into the front uh, with this member here on both sides so it's extremely stable it doesn't move at all so no worries there I've um, got the two Suzuki 2.5 horsepower four strokes uh, short shaft or standard shaft I guess uh, this one is the newer 2017 2018 that I've got for my offshore use and this is my old standby that I've had for the whole time frame there um, what else what else what else oh this gas can is I'm converting to it as my offshore gas can it's a it's a one and a quarter gallons so it's uh five liters uh one of my viewers actually sent it to me about two or three years ago it just showed up on my my porch i wasn't sure what it was what the guy finally got a hold of me said hey i sent you that gas can i really didn't use it because i didn't like the fact that this kind of just is out of in the way of stuff when because i usually have it sitting up there and i didn't want this kind of exposed where my other one everything fits into the the unit and it's just a cap but then I started using this one. It's actually nice. This just twists and then you just press the, press the plunger and it just injects fuel in there and then just put the cap and put it back. Uh, so I actually like it quite a bit. Um, but uh, I basically with these uh, motors, it's basically with one motor, I get uh, 10 miles per liter. Um, so this will this one tank by itself will get me 50 miles plus when I fill that up. So that would be 60 miles uh, worth of travel time right there. So plenty of uh time frame there um the back side not too much i didn't do anything in here well i did stuff in here uh, i've got my holder for the uh the rear rudder for uh the long distance travel but i replaced the rudder lines to these heavy duty my 1000 pound hobie adventure lines because they had some generic stuff on there that actually broke as soon as i pulled on it so i went through readjusted everything realigned put the wire the, the cables through the correct way uh fixed the inserts on the inside to prevent water from uh, coming in through these rudder lines that's a problem when you run the motors because it sinks down into the actual water and the water will shoot inside here and it fills it up but it did that got another rear handle here um i do 
did put on the quick release anchor system, the QRAS. Uh, so that's this, the rope setup I use there. Um, this, I've got a uh, sailing clamp there, so it's just unidirectional. So it goes in that one way and then, oops, hard to do it two hands, one hand, but then it won't come out the other way. Pulled towards the back at least. It's supposed to be, there we go. And then I usually tie it to this ball up here anyways, just to make sure, but then I could just quick release it and that releases the anchor system. I've got a video on that if you haven't seen that. Very important for any current type things, like on the reef when it's cranking, um, I could let it go real quick, quick if I need to chase a fish or if a boat's coming for me, or especially if I'm fishing the bridges or whatnot, stuff starts getting squirrely, I get turned to the side, uh, hit that release and then I'm free and then uh, I don't have to be worried about getting tossed over. Uh, so I did that. What I did not do is I did not add the uh, the anchor track system along the side like my uh, blue one um, like I said I won't really be using this one on the flats and inshore so I don't think that was very important um, it wasn't very important for um, putting on uh, the small drop anchor so I could shift the contact point front to back depending on the wind uh, this one has the sealing rudder which makes it different than my other one much bigger rudder there more control but that was existing there and yeah i think that's about it so that is the setup all right i'll mount this camera on this tree here and i'll make a run across and then you'll be able to see what uh five beast horsepower looks like maybe i'll race these guys yeah you, you want some all right i'll be there there you go now I've just got two quick changes to make and then I'll be ready for the spring offshore run yes All right, final project is done. And that's to add my rod holders here to the motor mount. I uh, went super heavy duty on it. These were what my old ones look like. It's just this cheap, thin plastic, it's all breaking. And the thing to remember is when I've got my offshore rods, my two trolling rods, my heavy duty eskies and those things, I've got about $2,000 just hanging off the edge in those things. <laughs> they just blink gone it'd be just over in a minute seconds actually uh so i wanted to make sure i did a really good job on these um use the uh, one upgraded to one and a half inch the electrical pvc uh my trolling rods have a butt end on them so they're a little bit bigger so i had to go to the the little bigger hole there um running dual hose clamps on there just to keep them together uh, i've got uh, bolted through bolted I'm um, using some fender washers so that'll spread out the uh, tension on it so prevent it from slipping through the bolts there. Um, then I ran a eye bolt into the motor mount and then zip tied it to the two uh, sections of the uh, rod holders so they're linked there. So even though if something broke here, uh, this top part isn't going to go anywhere, meaning the rods won't just slide out the side and then jump dump into the water. So that's going to be super heavy duty there very happy about that so yeah we're done then while i was at it uh i went ahead and replaced the motor mount uh two by six board since my other one was all cracked up it was just barely held together uh so i did that replaced all the hardware similar to the new one with the stainless steel nuts fender washers uh but otherwise the uh, pvc part of it is still the same and I gave it a good paint job, put the hardware back on, so it's just nice, clean. I uh, gave it a paint job, so it looks good. So that one is up to date.
but this kayak i really didn't have to do anything so it's ready to go i'll need to take this off the um, fish finder mount off since i won't run a fish finder on this one and then i like that hole open for um that's the uh, mast hole but i also like that for putting my uh, uh pump bilge pump in there my manual bilge pump so it's a nice handy spot but otherwise this one's done too all right now we are done done now the blue one has the nice rod holders man i like this setup it's about the coolest thing i have on my kayak <laughs> all right now we're ready all right so i think i can officially say uh both kayaks are done uh now i still need to take them out on a few test runs break in runs just to make sure everything is dialed in and good but uh, i think we're gonna be okay uh the red one i'll start uh taking it offshore hitting the uh the reef patch reefs just getting familiarized with everything out there uh then start going farther and farther out and see what's out there get back to the blue water stuff and then when you see the blue kayak i'll be back on the flats in the uh, back country doing my things back there but yeah super happy about it um i want to take the time and just say a huge thank you to my patreon supporters uh, they're the ones that take their hard-earned cash and throw money at me so I can do these kind of projects. Uh, it really makes a huge difference to the channel, makes things easier for me. I don't have to worry about it, think about it. If I need something, I've got that pool of money, I can just go out and buy it. And then anything left over, I can invest it back into the All About the Bait store. So nothing is ever wasted. Unfortunately, I never have any extra money for the hookers and coke since it all gets spent. But I uh, just wanted to thank you guys a lot for that. So thank you very much. Um, in the end, the reason why I'm not running the uh, dual outboards on there, it's just no need for it. Um, I'd probably have to do some work in order to it to function correctly, uh, get both motors harmonized together. Um, you would have to reverse the motors so you got the props going in the opposite directions. Uh, you would need them to be kind of uh, hard lined in. So when one turns, they both turns in order to keep yourself going straight. Um, it With the extra horsepower, the extra weight, it makes the back end dig in deeper. So all you're doing is causing more drag. So you're really not gaining very much. You'd have to put some sort of system in the back, get that thing to kind of sort of basically like a boat, get it up on plane, and then it would be more functional. But for me, I'm for fishing. I don't like, I'm not going for speed records. I'm not going to the sandbar as fast as I can. Uh, one of the golden rules is never leave fish to find fish. Okay, but this circumstance is don't run over fish to go find fish. All right, uh, it's kind of like the prospecting I'm doing in the back country. I'm not concerned about going as fast as I can around the island. I want to check out every little nook and cranny, every little cut um, on the flats. I want to find all those little indentions, those pockets, those little uh, bomb holes, that kind of stuff where I'm going to find where these fish are laying about. And that's the important thing. And you really just don't get that when you're just on plane going super fast. Kind of like hunting, okay? You see a lot more when you slow down, okay? Versus going as fast as you can. You cover more ground, but you miss everything. So that's kind of the reason why I'm not concerned with that. Uh, I have the motor, I've got the pedals, I've got the paddles, I can even put a sail on. So that safety aspect is already built into my kayak. So I don't have to have two motors like a boat do just in case one breaks, you can make it back. One thing breaks in mine, I've got three other options to get me back. So not a big deal, but uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching and look forward to some blue and red kayak fishing. All right, bye.